Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Marvel Comics, DC Comics, they've been the rage in Hollywood for all these years, but are there satanic and witchcraft themes to be exposed? We interview Pastor Joe Schimmel, who is documenting Satanism in the movies. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we're going to discern the spirits in Hollywood. Not just the people, the actors, the celebrities, but the actual stories that they tell influencing children in the light of the woke Disney era. Uh, we're also looking heavily into screenplays and the writing and the themes that are engaged in Marvel movies and DC comics Today, we go live via Skype to our new friend, Pastor Joe Schimmel, who has been exposing some of these themes. Welcome to the program, Pastor Joe. How are you, sir? Doing great, bro. Glad to be here. Uh, <laughs> waiting for that second intro. <laughs> Thank you. No, that that was it. Now, uh, I, yeah. I, I love the, 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 the surfer flavor, bro, that, that you're bringing to this theme here. Tell us about your <laughs> church there in Simi Valley. You're a pastor for a while. Yeah, I pastor a fellowship called the Blessed Hope Chapel for over 30 years now, ever since I was uh, in my mid-20s or so, and uh, came to Christ out of an experience of opening myself up to occult powers, uh, thinking Christianity was a joke, thinking uh, uh, Satan was mythical and so forth, and just rushing headlong into, in my teen years, into the power of the subconscious mind and psycho-cybernetics, books laying around my house when I was a kid, programming my subconscious mind and unleashing all kinds of occult activity and phenomena that I didn't believe existed because I was more of a naturalist. I knew there was something beyond me. Covers getting pulled down, but channeling music, you know, uh, treacherous meadows touched by the devil, burdened with calamity and subdued by disease and all these various uh, satanic lyrics just pouring through me. Satanic music, uh, Eastern music, even though I'm Southern, in, from Southern California, born and raised here, my music became very Eastern. Uh, a lot of people are just freaking out on my music, the style, uh, the Eastern style and so forth and the lyricism. But I was being turned into a hippie through my own music because reincarnation, all kinds of things that didn't even really subscribe to. I was young. Uh, I was being programmed basically by my, uh, what I thought was my subconscious mind ended up being occult demonic powers. And as the entities began to manifest themselves, I realized, wait, I'm not in touch with subconscious powers. I'm in touch with some kind of disembodied spirits. But I knew they were my experiences were very demonic and evil and very anti-Christ. And I realized, wait a minute, what if I've been the fool here? And I cried out to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, at first, you know, first I didn't really know how to pray. It was a very, probably the worst prayer I ever prayed. I was in a state of paralysis, humming sound going through my head, which was one of the mystical states I get into through meditation. And I cried out to God in a very feeble prayer. I just said, only in goodness, you know, only if this is good. And it stopped my experience. I could never get those experiences to stop. And then about a week or two later, it happened again, that same experience. I cried out more directly to God. And as soon as I started to cry, it, cry out to God, it stopped. And then I realized, you know, the, the, the person I've been attacking, because then I was coming to Christ at that point, because I realized all my stuff was anti-Christ. Wow. Came to Christ, fully delivered, opened my eyes, and God showed me through all the material, uh, all the stuff that I was into, all the big bands and everything out, how they became big. So many of these guys, I found out had the same occult path where in touch with demonic spirits and the rest is history. So I'm fascinated that out of occultism and spiritism and all of the demonic witchcraft that was happening in your personal walk, that Jesus reached into you and Jesus delivered you. Did you, did you experience like demons coming out of you or how did Christ come into you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the scriptures talk about how, you know, God reveals, the secret of the Lord, he reveals his covenant to those who fear him. So first I believe he re revealed himself as more powerful than Satan. He delivered me from the hand of Satan's power when I cried out to him. I got on my knees and 
and I realized it was Christ who I was against. My lyrics had very I had lyrics that were pro occult, but they were anti Christ. I didn't even know why I was so anti Christ. And then I realized, well, everything I'm against was Christ. And I was like just turning 18 at the time. And I hit my knees and I cried out to God, have mercy on me. Uh, he delivered me. I opened up the Bible. I knew I needed to look at that book. And then it would reveal the gospel of Jesus Christ to me. I realized who Jesus is and what he did for me. The first time I probably cried for someone else in a few years as a kid. Wow. And the tears were streaming down as I was reading about the crucifixion. And I gave my life to Christ. And uh, that humming sound, that that those experiences ceased at that point. And then I was under my first song, Dr. Chap, was called the, My Family and My Soul, just to let you know where I was coming from. And it was I was falling forever deeper into the hole. I couldn't be freed. The devil was grabbing my soul. I could hear my mother screaming and my sisters dreaming and my father dying and my brother crying. And at first I was troubled with the devil for the reason, then the choice had dawned to be my soul or that of my family is to be treasoned. I couldn't win to be a devil or a demon. And then the song ends with there I lie at the final bottom to say goodbye. And so I won, or maybe so. And so I left with my soul and began to rock and roll. And that's where my lead guitar came in. So my first song was about selling my family's souls to, to Satan for power. Of course, I didn't believe that at the time. Wow. And then when I came to Christ, I realized, wow, man, I was being played like a flute by, by Satan. And he's very real. Okay, so let's fast forward to after 30 years, you've been a pastor and you've been experimenting now, uh, working with Hollywood producers to expose other Hollywood producers that are putting these bad themes, not only into the rock and roll industry, you've done some documentaries on that, but now Marvel and DC comic movies. Uh, we're, we're gonna take a short break here, but I want you to set up the clip that we're gonna show after this break. Uh, how, how are the themes of witchcraft being exposed through your documentaries in the DC comic and, and Marvel comic movies? Yeah, so after I come to Christ, I did They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll, and I was able to research the occult backgrounds from top rock bands into Lester Crowley, Satanism, and all that. And some years gone by, I'd done Hollywood's War on God, Kinsey Syndrome, a lot of exposés. And after I'd seen a, a, a uh, film by, or a trailer by, you know, Avengers for, for Mar uh, Marvel, you know, out of Marvel, I was, I was blown away because you had Thanos saying, I am, you know, basically he's the enemy and humanity and the spiritual forces are gathered together in the, in the, in the trailer to fight Thanos. And he describes himself as I am, you know, with a pregnant pause, you know, and he's inevitable, he's invincible, all this stuff. I said, and I had already withdrawn my kids and stuff or myself from movies that uh, were portraying, a lot of the Marvel movies were kind of giving this scenario where there's these Armageddon scenarios, except the one who was depicted as Christ is always the evil one. And I said, now the Thanos says, I am, okay? And I, said, and I prayed a little flare prayer. I just said, Lord, if you want me to expose this, if there's something going on that's sinister, just like the music, please reveal it to me. I woke up, uh, Dr. Chap, the very next morning, and I was blown away because it was just burning on my heart to research it more. And then I could not believe what I found when I started looking at the main directors, you know, the main writers of Marvel, DC, seeing that many of them, the top leaders, I mean, Doc, uh, Alan Moore, just give you a couple examples, Alan Moore, Jack Moore, or uh, sorry, Alan Moore and Grant Morrison, the two top writers of the top 100 in the last four years of comic book review, voted by the fans, both those guys are followers or follow and do the practice of Aleister Crowley's satanic magic. Okay, we're gonna take a short break, but when we come back, you're gonna see all of this exposed in a seven minute trailer, more with Joe Schimmel right after this. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. If you've been following the LGBTQ agenda, there is now a radical program to take away freedom from Christians like you. In fact, they're trying to pass an unconstitutional law now, it's misnamed as the Equality Act, but it's really inequality for Christians. And it punishes people like Jack Phillips, the baker who didn't wanna participate in gay weddings, and florists and photographers. It also forces co-ed bathrooms on every business owner in America. You could lose your business if you don't let men into the ladies' restroom. It violates the privacy and safety of women, forces women to compete with men in their own sporting events. And finally, there are no religious exemptions. Even your church will be vulnerable. We want you to sign a petition against this today at PrayInJesusName.org. Click on PrayInJesusName.org. There's a row of petitions there. Look for the one called Equality. We will send it to Congress. Sign up today. We have a brand new action alert for 
the activist members of our TV audience, and we want you to take action today to stop the religious purge of Christians from the military. You mean they're kicking out Christians? Yes, by the thousands right now because religious exemption waivers are being denied by especially the Air Force. And we've seen recent headlines how Air Force Academy cadets are being kicked out and forced to repay hundreds of thousands of dollars in back scholarship money. This is just wrong. We are standing for the religious freedom of the cadets. We're asking you to call the Secretary of Defense office. He is Lloyd Austin, and he wrote the policy saying that religious exemptions will be granted on a case-by-case -case basis, then why are almost zero exemption waivers being granted? We need you to take action today by calling the Secretary of Defense office, and we have his phone number. Get your pen ready to write down this phone number. We want you to call and say, please, protect religious freedom. Don't purge the Christians out of the military. Here's that phone number. We want you to dial 703-692-7100. Again, that's 703-692-7100. Call the Secretary of Defense office and then call us for a free religious freedom sticker at 866-Obey-God. Press option three, take action today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Dr. Drew was rolled out by Stan Lee and by Jack Kirby in the image of Satanist Aleister Crowley in the year 1961. Kirby is not only one of the top creators behind many of the most popular comic characters, but he apparently opened himself up to demonic forces and demonic possession as a child. A couple years after Stan Lee and Jack Kirby rolled out Satanist Aleister Crowley in the form of Dr. Drew in 1961, he'd be morphed not only into Dr. Druid, but finally into Doctor Strange. And in 1964, they would also roll out Wanda, AKA the Scarlet Witch, which is reminiscent of Crowley's Scarlet Witch, which he dubbed the Scarlet Woman. Crowley twisted the Whore of Babylon mentioned in the biblical book of Revelation, chapter 17, which speaks of the wicked city which rides upon the beast or the Antichrist empire and how she is spiritually polluted with sorcery, a lust for money and power, and is filled with the blood of the martyred saints. The book of Revelation says of the scarlet whore of Babylon, quote, Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, and it was covered with blasphemous names, and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things, and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery, Babylon the Great the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. Crowley, who identified with the beast, the book of Revelation, hoped to fulfill the role of the Antichrist, used this biblical personification of the scarlet woman as an object of worship and his own personified sex magic whores, of which he listed over half a dozen women who played that role as a scarlet woman in his sex magic rituals. For Crowley, the role of the Scarlet Woman was to work with the beast to manifest the birth of the satanic Eon of Horus to replace Christianity. To get an idea of how Marvel's Crowleyan characters are impacting young people who are watching the Disney Channel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and other satanic programming, we can see the huge impact of comic aficionados like Comic Girl 19, who has about half a million subscribers to her channel. Here we see her dressed in scarlet like the Horror of Babylon with her golden cup by her side, celebrating the Scarlet Witch. Comic Book Girl here notes that she sees a number of parallels between the teachings of Satanist Alessa Crowley and how to worship the Scarlet Witch in Disney's WandaVision series. Speaking of witches, now let's take a moment to discuss some of the things in the show that pinged my occult radar. Now, one of the divine deities that the Thelemites worship is Babylon, AKA the Scarlet Woman, AKA the Great Mother. Oh, wow. And how do Thelemites worship Babylon, Mom? Followers, or adepts on the path of Thelema, set themselves on a spiritual journey. And on this mystical quest, they must cross what is called the Abyss, a great void of nothingness, an in-between place that straddles perceived manifest reality and the pure source energy beyond physical existence that is the true formless form of the material universe. 
While traveling the abyss, one will be tested by the Dweller in the Void, a demon named Koranzan, who will try to trap you in a world of illusion and keep you from the Scarlet Woman, who is just on the other side of this place that is not a place. And if one is able to cross the abyss without being trapped and get to the other side, then they must give themselves fully to Babylon, and then they will be reborn as a master. Comic Girl is so enthralled with occult themes and what the Book of Revelation depicts as evil with regard to the Scarlet Woman that she goes on to promote Alan Moore's Promethea, which is also inspired by Satanist Aleister Crowley. If you're interested in reading a comic that beautifully illustrates the idea of a scarlet woman presiding over an ideological apocalypse, as well as taking a trip through the Kabbalistic spheres, then I highly recommend checking out Alan Moore and J.H. William III's Promethea, books one through five. You will not be disappointed. Wanda Maximoff, or the Scarlet Witch, started off as a mutant, but she's had her origin story recanned, and she became a witch capable of wielding chaos magic. The essence of chaos magic is the ability to change reality through perception and magical means, which is exactly what Wanda is capable of doing. Comicbook.com states, quote, Wanda is the Scarlet Witch of Chaos Magic. The concept of the Scarlet Witch was not only inspired by Crowley's Scarlet Woman and the biblical horror of Babylon, but Crowley's satanic teachings on magic are considered one of the major influences behind chaos magic. Wikipedia's page on Chaos Magic cites Aleister Crowley along with Austin Spear as the early influences of Chaos Magic. Cambridge University's website states that, quote, Chaos Magic, which they spell with a K, is an innovation of 20th century occultism that draws influence from a variety of sources, including occultists such as Aleister Crowley and Austin Osmond Spear. Chaos Magic is often spelled with a K at the end of the word magic because this spelling was originally introduced by Satanist Aleister Crowley because he believed that the letter K was his magical Kabbalistic letter. The Scarlet Witch uses this Crowley and Satanic Chaos Magic throughout the 2022 movie Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. In Episode 8 of Disney and Marvel's WandaVision, the witch Agatha Harkness reveals to Wanda that she is a limitless well of Chaos Magic and reveals to her that the dark powers of chaos magic that she channels make her the Scarlet Witch. You're supposed to be a myth, a being capable of spontaneous creation. Here you are, using it to make breakfast for dinner. Let go of my children. Oh, yes, your children. The vision, this whole little life you've made. This is chaos magic, Wanda. That makes you the Scarlet Witch. Disney and Marvel for years have seduced countless young people into witchcraft and the occult, considered abominations to God by advertising occult powers for those who would open their hearts and their minds to these powers through their movies and TV shows. Here we see shirts that have been made promoting the Scarlet Witch and the Crowley-inspired chaos magic. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to bring you my biggest bedding sale ever, just in time for Christmas. Get my Giza Dream bed sheets for as low as $29.98. A set of pillowcases, only $9.98. Rejuvenate your bed with a MyPillow mattress topper for as low as $99.99. We also have blankets in a variety of sizes, colors, and styles. We even have blankets for your pets. Get duvets, quilts, down comforters, body pillows, bolster pillows, and so much more, all at the biggest discounts ever. I know my bedding products are perfect for you, and I'm extending my money back guarantee for Christmas until March 1st, 2023, making them the perfect gifts for your friends, your family, and everyone you know. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen, use your promo code, and you'll get huge discounts on all my pillow bedding products, including my Giza Dream bed sheets for as low as $29.98. Get all your shopping done now while quantities last. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my original My Slippers are back in stock. You've made them a huge success, and now I've added smaller sizes, larger sizes, wide sizes, and all new colors. And with your promo code, you still save $90 a pair. Not only that, I'm having the biggest closeout sale ever on our sandals and slides for as low as $19.98. 
What makes my slippers different is my exclusive four layer design that you're not gonna find in any other slippers. My slippers patented layers make them ultra comfortable, extremely durable, and they help reduce stress on your feet. Wear them anytime, anywhere. So go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen now. Use your promo code to save $90 on my original My Slippers, or for as low as $19.98, you can get our sandals or slides. Quantities won't last long, and with my 60-day money-back guarantee, you can rest assured they'll be the most comfortable footwear you'll ever own. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. There we just saw, before this commercial break, a seven-minute trailer, but Joe Schimmel, you have done uh, hours of documentaries. Where can people find the full uh, story on, on what they just saw? Uh, they go to our main website, goodfight.org, and they'll be able to see a lot of different exposés, but we've done two uh, Marvel exposés right around two and a half hours or so each. And it's just, it's a blow of mine. When people see it, they'll be like, wow, this is real. If they don't know Jesus, they're gonna want Jesus. Well, that is interesting. So <laughs> by exposing the witchcraft themes or the anti-Christ themes, what does the Bible have against witchcraft? What's wrong with it? Well, the apostle Paul said in Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the, uh, with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. So as Christians, we're called to, uh, just as a doctor might show in an MRI that someone has cancer, <clears throat> as Christians, we're supposed to expose the darkness that's enveloping and destroying people's souls. And the main purpose that God comes against witchcraft uh, for is because there are really two ultimate spiritual forces in this world, uh, good and evil. There's God and his angelic realm, the power of the Holy Spirit, and there's Satan and his fallen angels who are in, in, in uh, rebellion to God. and uh, witchcraft, the occult, uh, sorcery, Satanism, uh, it opens you up to trafficking into the demonic world and open yourself up to the spirit world, the very thing that Satan wants to use. And Paul says that the spirit of this age, the prince of the power of the air, Satan works through the children of disobedience to guide the course of this world in Ephesians chapter two. And that history is, is linear and it's moving toward its culmination at the battle of Armageddon. And right now, the Lord is in the process of revealing who's going to be true to him, know him, re receive the gospel, find Christ and who's going to reject him. So we have just about three and a half minutes left. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ and why should somebody re reject Satan and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord? Well, Dr. Schaff, you probably know that the, the word gospel itself in the Greek is euangelion and it's a beautiful word and it means good news. You know, it's great. It can be translated great news. And before you can understand how good or great that news is, you have to realize the state of depravity that we're in as human beings. And I like to say we're in double trouble. We have two huge problems. One is that we're guilty of sin, for the Bible says all of sin and come short of the glory of God, and, and the wage of sin is death. The second thing is we have a fallen, wicked, evil nature, uh, where even from childhood, children, you know, as we grew up, we're, we're, we're struggling with this, this desire to do evil. So we've got double trouble. We've got, we're, we've got the sin nature, and we're guilty before God. And through the cross and the work of the Holy Spirit in the gospel, that is rectified. We're reconciled to God because our sin separates us from God. So the good news is that Jesus Christ, uh, God became a man, died on the cross to pay for our sins so we could be forgiven and no longer guilty before God, no longer condemned. And when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior and we put our faith in him and realize we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God, not of works as anyone should boast because it's a free gift of what Christ did for us. And we embrace Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and, and we turn to him in faith for forgiveness. We not only receive forgiveness, but the Holy Spirit comes into us and the Holy Spirit transforms us and that fallen nature, we begin to become more and more like Christ. We're transformed into becoming Christ-like from glory to glory. So the good news is that we can embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and come to know him and have eternal life. <clears throat> and when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the penalty for my sins, for your sins, for all who call on Christ, Their sin, our sins can be forgiven because Jesus paid the debt and we no longer owe the debt for our past sins. Uh, in the same way, hey, his amen. innocence and his perfection, his holiness is now transferred onto us. So even though we were guilty, we become forgiven and innocent. Even though he was innocent, he becomes guilty for us and we can go to heaven instead of hell because our sins are forgiven and canceled by what he did for us on the cross. Would you lead somebody in a prayer? Somebody wants to get saved today. Yes, let's pray. Father God, we come before you in your son's name and we give you thanks for your goodness and your love and your mercy. And we thank you for that great exchange that Jesus died even though he's the innocent one and was condemned in our place so we could be accepted and we could become part of his body. 
We pray, Father, if there's anybody listening here, and we, we, we hope there's many that are saying, hey, I want to know Jesus. We pray right now, Father, that they would just pray with us and they just say, Lord God, have mercy on me. I admit I'm a sinner. I, I, I pray for mercy and pray that you cleanse me and wash me clean by the precious blood of Christ. You died in my place so I could have eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to read your word and get to know you better and grow in the faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When I was 18 years old, I prayed a simple prayer. Jesus, I don't wanna be my own boss anymore. Jesus, I want you to be the boss of my life. If you prayed with Praise Joe God. Schimmel right now, we want you to call us at 866-Obey-God. You can learn more on his website, goodfight.org, or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. We need your donations, large or small, to continue to bring you these kinds of interviews and reports, PrayInJesusName.org. Especially remember to put us in your top three charities for holiday giving. If you need prayer, or if you just prayed with us, call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. We'll see you next time. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you need a physical or spiritual healing? Are you being tested or tried? When Jesus needed to pray, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you need to really connect with God? If you're visiting Colorado Springs, come see the Gateway Prayer Garden just south of the city along Interstate 25. Walk our prayer trails among the trees by the beautiful Fountain Creek. Stand at the foot of our large cross and connect with Jesus. Enter our life-size replica of the empty tomb and spend time reading key Bible verses etched in stone along our ground cross as big as a football field. Join our worship gatherings and plan to attend our annual Easter sunrise worship service. We're located off I-25 exit 132A at 8035 Bandley Road, just north of the KOA campground. Experience Jesus at gatewayprayergarden.org. That's gatewayprayergarden.org. Do you have Muslim friends or neighbors living in America? We want to give them Bibles in their native language, and you can help. We're making a free offer to you, the viewing audience, to help give away free Bibles to Muslims. If you want us to send a copy of the New Testament for yourself or a friend in any of the following languages, we would love to send it to you free of charge. We've got an Arabic New Testament available, Farsi New Testament, Turkish New Testament, the Kurdish New Testament in Kurmanji, the Kurdish New Testament Sorani, and the Dari Gospel of John. All you need to do is contact our office by phone, 719-574-5900. Again, that's 719-574-5900. Or send an email request to hope at vopg.org. Again, that's hope, H-O-P-E, at vopg.org. And we'll process your request right away. God bless you. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.